This is an amino acid. Amino acids are the molecules that make up your proteins in your body. And uh, this is on page 7 of the notes. Um, so an amino acid, as it says on page 7, is a molecule with both an amine and a carboxylic acid functional group. So this amino acid here, amine right there, carboxylic acid right there, an amino acid. Um, the amino acids that generally make up the proteins in our body have different R groups here, and it turns out there are 20 different R groups that are possible. Uh, the simplest R group would just be a hydrogen there, that would be called glycine. Um, then you have bigger R groups like uh, a CH2 linked to a phenyl ring, uh, that is called phenylalanine. So when you put these different amino acids in different orders in proteins, that makes the proteins take different shapes and then they can do different functions in the body. Um, so that's that's what amino acids are, and uh, that's why they're important. Um, but in chapter 19, uh, we are going to talk about, um, we, like, like we've talked about before, we were talking about extracting molecules and uh, getting them pure. Um, so what is a problem about amino acids with that? So um, the bullet points that I have here are, uh, they are the molecules that make up proteins, and then the second bullet point says, what will those functional groups do together? So if we just have an amine and we have a carboxylic acid and we mix these two molecules together, they aren't going to be stable. Um, they are going to undergo a reaction. Um, so what I want you to do is pause the video for a second and think about what is a possible reaction that these two molecules could do together. Um, so do that and then boop, boop. All right, you've unpaused. So, um, if you think about what we've been doing, we've been doing extractions that takes advantage of acid-base chemistry. So um, an acid-base reaction could happen between these two molecules. So the, the amine could take the proton of the carboxylic acid, and then on the opposite side of this equilibrium arrow, we could have the quaternary ammonium salt, or the quaternary ammonium species, and the carboxylate. So, question is, which side of this is favored? Um, so again, take a minute, think about it. Is this side going to be favored or that side? Think about peak A values. How can they guide you in that question? All right. Um, so we have to think about which side is favored. The stronger base is going to push the equilibrium away from it. So, or sorry, the stronger acid is going to push the equilibrium away from it. So we have that carboxylic acid over here, and this is the conjugate acid over here. So carboxylic acid, the pKa of that is 5. The pKa of NH4+, plus, which is the most related thing to NH3 with that methyl group on it, because it's a, a nitrogen that's positively charged, is 9. So this is actually the more acidic acid, which is going to push the equilibrium to this side. So the equilibrium is over here. So um, how does that, what does that mean about amino acids? Um, people often draw amino acids in their neutral form like this, but anytime we have an amino acid, it's not going to be neutral. It's actually going to be charged, doubly charged. And there's actually a term for this type of molecule. It's called a Zwitter ion. So a Zwitter ion is a molecule um, with both positive and negative charges on that same molecule. So uh, we'll just write molecule with positive and negative charges, which means it's net neutral. So it is, has a net neutral charge. One minus one positive means that it is net zero charge. But there are ionic functional groups here. Um, so what does that mean about its solubility? Will this molecule be soluble in aqueous media or organic media or, or, or organic solvents? So aqueous solvents or organic solvents. Um, so water or something like dichloromethane. So um, think about that posit and uh, decide what you think, aqueous or organic. Yeah. 
All right. So um, we, we already talked about charged species are aqueous soluble. So this is going to be aqueous soluble. And it turns out, because we have both of these functional groups on this molecule, there's going to be no way to make it neutral. So amino acids are always aqueous soluble. Um, if, we, if we treat this amino acid with a, with a base, it will be able to deprotonate this NH3 to make that neutral, but the carboxylate would still be neutral at that point. If we treat this molecule with an acid, the carboxylate would protonate, making this neutral, but this would still be charged. So there's no way to make this a neutral species, which means that it's always aqueous soluble. And that has an important impact on our inability to, set, to, to purify these by extraction techniques. We can't purify them by extraction techniques because they will always be aqueous soluble.